connect and get a, a relationship. That's a very important one as well. We've met with a few and are still trying to meet with some other people, mainly to get, um, to get into their books, let them know that, look, we can actually carry out a very good evaluation for this work you're doing, that's what you're doing, you know, but it also comes to competing with other people. Yeah, so, and then participating in strategic programs. Um, currently, we have a, a program ongoing from UNFPA. Uh, that's one of our first programs, well, we'll talk about that. Um, then one-on-one -on -one meetings with strategic individuals, well, that's that we do sometimes, we've not done that yet, but we need to identify those strategic individuals. And if you know anyone, well, we are ready to see how to meet them one-on-one. -on -one. And then one of the strategies as well is actual research. You know, carry out research and publish. You know, that's, that's a core function of the, of the unit. And then motivation. I mentioned this example about the university pitching, um, getting students to pitch, because they want to win the money. And I remember it's $1,000. And if you see how students are so interested, you know, are coming up with actual programs and sitting down in front of the entire university with a panel of judges and pitching. You know, great, yeah. So our successes so far, we have secured them. Um, an agreement with UNFPA. Now, this, this doesn't come with a lot of money, but it is, it is a strategic partnership. Yeah, UNFPA has data link in their system as, as a university they are working with. Now, it's up to us now to prove to them that we, we are capable of doing A, B, C. You know, and I am in the process of doing that every day, trying to let them know that um, we, are, we can actually achieve, help them achieve those, those aims and to do more. And I'm aiming a lot at evaluations, evaluation of projects, projects that we are not involved in because we can't evaluate our own projects. I'm really, really looking for evaluations, and that's the aim. Okay, so, and that's, that also helps the, um, in the university's publicity or visibility in and across, in Ghana and across the world. Uh, it helps. It depends on how we use it. That, and then we are trying to use it to, um, in the best way possible to make sure that we get maximum benefits from that. Okay. All right, so, so um, as part of the successes, we have, we have trained 12 Orange Ambassadors. UNFPA actually has selected, um, well, with the help of Dr. Kijo, we have 12 people. There were actually 20, but 12 people responded. Um, they were trained at Legon, University of Ghana, by um, UNFPA facilitators on sexual and gender-based violence a two-day training. And now these people are ambassadors for UNFPA now. You know, and they're carrying out a number of activities already. We've carried out two activities already so far and have reported on them to UNFPA. Now we are also in, um, in, in conjunction with UNFPA, we have developed a sexual harassment policy. We've drafted a sexual harassment policy, which we are looking forward to deliberating on. So UNFPA is going to fund, probably next week or so, they're going to fund an active, um, a meeting for the senior staff of this um, institute to deliberate on the sexual harassment policy that has been um, drafted by me, you know, and uh, so this is one of the activities that's going to be funded by UNFP. And then they'll, after that, they'll fund a launching, a grand launching of it, 
we plan to invite the media houses, Joy FM, TV3, and all, all that as part of the budget. So, all right, so currently we are, we are organizing documents, uh, the current task at hand, which we are we're organizing documents, we're building profiles, we're trying to build a profile which we can use. And then we're working on an entrepreneurship center. I'm sure there will be time later to talk about it, because that's, that's a whole thing. And then we have information. We, we want to have information organized and ready for, for use. Ready for use, because um, there's currently none, which is not helpful to the department. So we, we're actually starting from ground zero ground zero and that's um, a lot of work but we are we are doing our best okay so we're also organizing departmental information so we'll be able to be able to profile every department are you and have wondering very important information your on your activities because I'm sure it's not just um, contact with students and that's it you know whatever the activities are we would like to know. You just walk in and talk about it. That's, I think that's, that's, that's the best way. And my office is next to Dr. Kujo's office. Everybody knows Dr. Kujo's office. So uh, you just kindly walk in and, and let's talk about it. Whatever you would like us to do, we're, we're ready and willing to do that. And then we're, we're also trying to determine a strategic direction for fundraising. It's, it's also very important. And then to chart a fundraising course and, and partnership path. You know, it's, it's, those, those are the things we're doing to, to, to set it up in the first place. You know, and then we can use now to raise funds. Because I'm sure that... Um, a lot of people, a lot of expectations are, well, this, this guy is here to raise funds, so we expect it next week. But then you, you need information to be able to put this together. And I'm, I'm being really honest. I mean, you, can't, you, can't do, you can't do, you can't write a proposal without background information. You can't. You know, you can't. But then we are, we are on it. Um, we, are, we are almost there. Okay. All right. So everyone, everyone kindly get involved. Everyone. It's very important. We, it's, we need, we actually need everyone to come on board with information. Anything, anything. If your student comes up with ideas, and, and students do have ideas that they want, they, they, sometimes they even wonder who, who to discuss this with. And I'm sure as faculty, they'll come to you definitely. Sometimes, well, sometimes. If they come to you with an idea, please, um, let's, let's have it. That we, we need that. We need those ideas from students. Okay, so please, let's get involved. You're, you're cordially welcome. All right. So uh, just a bit, finally, this is the final but one slide. Um, this seminar series, just a little information. So the aim, uh, we've, I think we've talked about the aim already. So maybe we'll just go straight to the, the shadow. Um, there's a shadow. Is that, is that all? There's supposed to be a slide. Okay. Well, we'll share the shadow. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you. So um, this is the first today. Uh, it's supposed to be seventh October. But okay. So just well, we um, my department is is presenting today. So after that, we're going to have other departments. Um, oh, okay. Other department with computer science next month 
computer science and engineering department is presenting, doing exactly what I have just done. Yeah. And then the next month in November, um, in December, accounting and finance department will, will, will be standing here and doing this. And then following that will be marketing and human resources department. So please just keep putting your presentations together. If you need any clarification, please just walk in, kindly walk in. Um, and then we'll start again. Computer science and engineering will take over again in February, I think. Yeah, in, in February. Then accounting will continue like that. Is there any department left out? Yes, uh, registry. Okay, great. Thank you very much. We'll put that. We'll put that down. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Yes, uh, I think computer science. Yes. Yes, second Thursday. Okay. Yes. Yes, and that's why we are giving this ahead of time. So, um, well, thank you for that information. Registry and um, quality assurance and library. Yeah. So the, the shadow is going to be redone, and then we're going to share for, for further inputs. Thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions, already. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Sari. And uh, please let's give it up for him. I think he has he has really done well. I have 10 minutes to do questioning. So please, if you have questions on the presentation he has done, especially on the work of his office, because I'm sure it's the work of the office that is going to push everything. So I just want to give 10 minutes for questioning. My first question was asked by registrar, so I'll skip that. I wanted to know what he has for administrators, but I think that's what registrar asked, and it will go into the shadow. Because for most academic institutions, the administrators are not usually involved in um, research, but I'm happy I can see administrators here. That means data link is a different place. Administrators are also interested in research. So to, just to add to registrar's um, concern, let's do something special for administrators to push administrators also into research. Then one thing I also picked from his presentation was the need for collaboration with his office. He kept mentioning that his office is close to Dr. Kujo's office. His office, again, is close to Dr. Kujo's office, and he's open up for ideas. So please, let's always go there and pick ideas. He's calling for ideas from us, so let's go and give him ideas. And also, I want to suggest something. This one is not a question. On the entrepreneurship center, when you mention data link, the first thing that comes to everybody's mind is IT. So I would also plead that when you are doing your entrepreneurship center, you have something special for IT so that you don't, we don't follow the normal trend of business entrepreneurship center that is very common so that data link can catch a niche for itself. So these are my a question and then contribution. So now the floor is open for questions. I don't know whether the, the chairman has a question. Chairman, please, do you have a question? So please, any question, any question, any comment? Yeah, my name is Dominic Amedeke. Please, in your presentation, you got to a point where you said you'll be having meetings with strategic 
individuals. Uh, may I know who, who is a, a strategic individual? I need a clarification on that. Yeah. So we will take three questions, then he can answer. So this is COVID protocol. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Modrita. Uh, my question has to do with the, the third point with regards to uh, fundraising, harvesting ideas. In computer science, uh, most of our students conduct system development at the end of the final year. Uh, and every year, they come out with a lot of systems, a lot of applications, intelligent and then expert systems. But these, are, these projects are left at Mr. Mavis office and that's so I'll just appeal to your office that any time you're having this uh, research, maybe if you can come there so that you can look how best you can prove out this work and then maybe market them for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. The last one, then he can respond to them. Okay, so Mr. Kletus. Okay. Strategic individual. Okay. Now I'm not going to give academic... Um, definitions of strategic individual but let me let me give you an example of something so I was involved in adolescent health promotion I needed funds from a UN agency somewhere and then I went to the Ministry of Education in that country you know and then I have a friend who is a secretary to like, you know, not exactly secretary, but like a, a technical assistant to a commissioner for private schools. Now, this person is a friend to um, the project officer in charge of adolescent health. Or UNFPA doesn't do health, but in charge of SRHR, sexual and reproductive health. They do that. So that person becomes a strategic individual who, who can connect me or organize a meeting with, with me, I mean, between me and the UNFPA person. Okay, so a strategic individual is someone in a strategic position to, to be able to help you achieve what you want. Yeah. Thank you. I think the second one was a suggestion that the ICT people, the student has a lot of projects that are on the shelves, so we should. I think that's a great one. The first initiative that we last week, I think that's a matter of agency to organize a fair and then the way we retain the Their project there. It's publicity. Don't you have any budget for publicity? 
Look at it, we'll talk about it, but I need money. All right. Thank you very much. Any other comment, question, contribution? Let me take two, then we can move on to the next presentation. Registrar, please, any contribution? Okay, so I think we can move on to the next presentation. So we invite Mr. Sari again to do a presentation on ongoing research. Okay. So there's, there's one research currently ongoing. Uh, the, one of the most prominent research uh, efforts that's ongoing is what I'm about to present. Um, so there's a little background. There was a call for expression of interest. So it looks like the world of tertiary institutions, or let's use the appropriate, now I want to use the appropriate term, higher education institutions. You know, it's coming up with a book on entrepreneurship, like global entrepreneurship education. I'm trying to use the right words. <laughs> entrepreneurship education okay so they have advertised this expression of interest that universities um, higher education institutions across the world can publish chapters within the book okay so we are responding to this so that um, data link university has a chapter in this global book that's coming. I'm sure is um, I'm sure you know what it means to have such a book, you know, for the world. So we are we are we are attempting to be to be in this book, and we are hoping to be actually in it. Okay. So the book is titled "Entrepreneurship Development in Higher." Education Institutions, uh, a global perspective. That's the title of the, general, the book generally. And then it involves a number of, actually seven, seven predetermined themes okay, that the higher in, um, education institutions can choose from and then research on those themes for submission. So we chose the seventh team, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to display all the seven. So um, we chose the last one, which is higher education policy on entrepreneurship development. Uh, I, uh, if you ask me what criteria, <laughs> we, just, we just chose it. Um, this is under the supervision of the president, so we, we just thought that this, this is fine, this is appropriate and we can work on this. Um, so the deadline for submission of this is mid-December. Uh, Mid-December, we are supposed to submit this um, research to be scrutinized and approved and probably back and forth and then finally put in. Okay, so we are going, moving into what we have chosen to do and what we have done so far. That's what we're going to present. Um, so an introduction to this, to this research. The, the roles of higher education institutions are shifting from just providing education um, to driving economic transformation. Okay, so, and, and many higher education institutions are moving towards this. Um, we had a program in Legon recently, and then I, I, I met with a careers officer, an officer in charge of careers. I'm like, okay, when, I, well, I don't know if it's, it's been there, but then they have some departments now, um, which, which is actually a sign that it's actually moving from just 
teaching. And this career officer is not teaching anything. But the university is supposed to be a place for teaching and learning. You see, so that's actually evidence that higher education institutions are, move, uh, are shifting from just facilitating learning to driving economic transformation. And that's what we are trying to be doing. Okay, now higher education institutions are generally characterized by three pillars, education, research, economic development. Okay. And this research that we are carrying out right now, it, it's, it, um, we're trying to make it fit into these pillars. Okay. So, all right, I think that's, yeah, we'll move on. Now, government has an obligation. Definitely, government has an obligation. We've seen back and forth government wanting to be, to control the universities and, you know, that being resisted and so on. But government definitely has an obligation in meeting global goals, especially um, SDG 4, 8, and 16. SDG 4 is education, quality, equitable education. SDG 8 is about employment and um, livelihoods. You know, and then 16 is also related to employment and um, decent lifestyles. Now, it takes policies, policies, governance, and support from government to make these things um, happen. Okay. And uh, um, um, let me try to just say a bit on that. It is government policy. I'm sure even this university has some government policies governing it. You know, um, or certain departments need to meet certain standards. You know, things like that. So it takes these policies to make sure that um, the shift from just providing education to economic development actually happens and happens for the learners. Okay. Now the fourth industrial revolution requires a concerted effort. The fourth industrial revolution, this, this term came up at the World Economic Forum in 2016 when a certain man brought it up. And it has to do with, um, they call it the internet of things. You know, everything going IT. You know, having um, biological and robotics and everything working together. You know, like physical, biological and um, technology working together in a way, having everything having IT play a role in everything, everything and everyday life. You know, that's, that's what they, they're referring to as the fourth industrial revolution. And it is an inevitable partnership. Having higher education institutions on board is inevitable. Because this is where people are trained to drive this and to make it happen. Okay. So our research is looking at the opinion of um, learners and educators in higher education institutions regarding the role of government policy in entrepreneurship development. So we're going to be asking some of you educators and some learners your opinions. It's, it's more of an opinion survey to make it easy, okay, about the role of government policy in entrepreneurship development. Okay, so these are the seven topics. The first one was entrepreneurship in education, entrepreneurship support, entrepreneurship educators. Then the fourth one, academic entrepreneurship. And then number five, we have entrepreneurial university. Number six, economy. And then the last one, 
number seven, higher education policy on entrepreneurship development. And that's what we have chosen to work on. Yeah. We, we decided to choose the most difficult because we, we think that other people will choose the easier ones. And so it gives us a better chance of, of being in this book. I think it makes sense now. <laughs> so the research topic, or let me call it the proposed research topic, because your inputs are very much welcome. The research topic is perceptions of learners and educators on the existence or effectiveness of government policy on the personal and, connect, personal and collective entrepreneurship development of learners of higher education institutions in Ghana. Okay. I'm sure the, this presentation will be shared. So. Um, probably or not. <laughs> All right. So um, we have a study question. Do learners and educators of higher education institutions in Ghana perceive government policy on education, on entrepreneurship, to be adequate and enabling enough to guarantee their individual and collective entrepreneurship development? That is our study question, our research question for this. And I'll, I'll, um, we are presenting it for your input, so I, I hope you have taken notes so that when I finish, we can make inputs as well. So we are hypothesizing that the, the, the perceptions, th there is very low perception, there's a very low perception of educators and, uh, and, and learners about this research topic, uh, the question we are asking. And the hypothesis is based on current trends and, and publications, which will be in the protocol. The, the, the references are in the protocol, so uh, the, the detailed protocol. This is just a presentation. But, but this is our hypothesis. So we are going to prove whether it is um, whether it is this holds true or it doesn't at the end of the um, the next okay. So we are we are we are using a mixed method approach. We are going to have a, uh, for our quantitative approach. We are going to have a survey through the administrative or administration of semi-structured questionnaire to, to both learners and educators. And then we are also looking at um, a qualitative approach of in-depth interviews with key informants, one or two key informants that we can transcribe and analyze. Then we are looking at the geographical coverage of Accra greater Accra region. And we are looking at both public and private um, higher education institutions in Accra only, only within the greater Accra region. And we are looking, the timeline is up to, from now to December, very, very, very short timeline, but we are, we are on course. So our study design, we are, we are doing a population survey, a population survey. Okay. And uh, our study population, we are looking at universities, public and private universities. We know that being in a public or private university can, can constitute a confounder of a sort. And so we are stratifying it to, to make sure that our results are as accurate as possible. Okay, so learners and educators in public and private 
higher education institutions. We're using the stratified cluster sampling strategy. And um, we, we are using um, EpiInfo to calculate sample sizes. We, we are looking at the first stratum, which is learners. We are looking at learners as one stratum, educators as another. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll need 190 from each stratum to be able to, from the private and then the public um, institutions of higher learning to be able to get the results. And then for the educators, we need 109 um, educators. Yeah. Um, this thing is not working, sorry. The next. Okay, good. So, um, this is the next one, right? Okay. So uh, we're going to train in a few weeks, probably next week or two. We are uh, once our once our questionnaire is done, we are going to train uh, um, data collectors and uh, probably some supervisors for quality assurance to to do this. So just go into the sampled uh, universities or probably polytechnics and so on and, and collect this data for us. And definitely we'll be calling on some of you to help with the entry and analysis. Definitely, there's nowhere else we can go. <laughs> we have to call on you for, for this. Um, we, my, my suggestion is EPI info. Uh, we can also use SPSS to enter this data and analyze. I find EPI info really easy, easy to use. Um, so analysis will be done based on predetermined trends. We're, we're going to discuss this. Um, in, uh... All right, so just a bit more detail for quality assurance, we, we are, uh, well, this, the first one, random error is, is like, it's, it's, there's no choice, <laughs> you know. And then we're going to deal with selection bias, and um, one, one, one bias in, um, in population surveys that affects the results is what they call the order effects. Okay, so here we, we're going to ensure that the, the questions and the alternative, the alternative um, responses are ordered in such a way that it doesn't lead to bias. You know, we, we don't put in what we want them to choose. You know, like we make it as objective as possible. That's one bias in, um, in population surveys. We're going to, um, can we go back please? <laughs> yeah. And then the, the other one will be the survey format bias which is how, um, having to do, it has to do with how the data collectors present the question. But here we are, we are dealing with students and educators who will read the question themselves and you know, make sense out of it. So that is almost dealt with in a way. All right, so the next, yeah, all right. So as a quality control measure, uh, we're going to do a two-day training for data collectors to make sure that they go out there and come back with something that can be worked with. We, they, they might, the people we are presenting this to might ask for everything, even the raw data, you know, even the everything. So we need to have something that, you know, that we can present with, with, with our chest out. <laughs> I'm sure you know what it means. We can, we can present confidently. Um, yeah, data entry will be done by very qualified people. And um, the, these tools, the tools we're going to be using, especially the questionnaire, will be validated, you know, and, and pre-tested so that we, we are sure that we have some very good quality data coming out of this. Uh, well, the study protocol is, is done. Um, so this 
I got this, I, I summarized this out of the study protocol. So we have a protocol that will be approved. Um, if necessary, we will need ethical approval sometimes when you're doing, when you have human subjects this way, sometimes ethical approval. I don't think that should be difficult since we are a, a tertiary institution. Um, so a few ethical issues we're going to, we are, we are also considering just to get this done well, that uh, identity protection, the, the identities of the respondents will not be revealed in any form. So we are going to have coding. Um, the nature of the study will be exp explained to the respondents so that they know, uh, they know exactly what they are, they are answering. Okay. And in case we have disabled respondents, we'll, we'll find a way of making sure that they're able to respond appropriately. Um, and there will be no stigmatization based on responses. Um, okay. So this is, this is, these are the activities. We started with, uh, we, we finalized the research topic in September. Um, study protocol completed. Questionnaire completed. And then we're going to have the questionnaire validated um, in October. We've not validated that yet. I think this is, is an older one. So this is the, the schedule we have. And by December, by mid-December, it should be submitted. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Asari. And please, let's give it up for him again. I think he has presented within time, and I'm happy for that, because I'm working with time. I have another 10 minutes for question on this. But before I go to the floor, I have two, one, com one question and then a comment. Mr. Asari, the first question, my first question is, um, with this research that we are doing, um, how are we going to do it? Are you forming a team to do it or your office is doing it and as to when you need, you know, somebody, you, 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 call, you call on the person. That's my first question. And then the second one is, is just a contribution. I'm, I'm glad we, we are doing proper data collection. I would suggest that when you, when you do your, okay, that one is gone. When you do your questionnaire, um, try as much as possible to expand the questionnaire so that at least we can get what we want for this particular um, uh, research than other areas of entrepreneurship because this the way you are collecting it is going to be a very good data for your office for future research around entrepreneurship so that's a suggestion so my first question are you doing it as a team or Pro, please i'm the moderator give me the privilege to <laughs> thank you very much well, um, I, 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 don't, I don't decide on that. I think the, this question will go to the, the president who is supervising this, who is supervising me with this. Because I, I don't, um, nobody reports to me and I report to you. Yeah, thank you. So please, let's open the floor for more questions. Yes, Prof. We want voluntary, we want commitment, we want somebody who makes it. So we are not going to force it on anybody. So if we know you're interested, which is very good for you, come and join us and let's do it. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. I kindly want to ask a question regarding the research topic. I want to confirm if this is the final version of the 
research topic. No, we are, we are. Thank you very much. Please, more questions. So I'll take three questions. Okay. Thank you very much, Prof. So this is a model presentation he has done. That is how the subsequent yes. seminars will be like. So a department will come and present like this, then we created it. So that's what... Journal paper. So I'll take three questions on the floor. It should, could be a question. Oh, okay. Comment, contribution. Okay, a comment from Abigail, please. He said I should give her some time to think about it. Well, uh, I would say it, it, it's a very laudable initiative to start with. And I commend those who are at the forefront doing it now. In fact, if some of these things were introduced 2006, 2007, data link would have gone far. But as at that time, the direction was different. So now that you are bringing these things on board, I think it's a good idea. Let's support it. Thank you. The floor is still open. Again, I, 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 I'm also working on a, a similar project. Mine has to do on policy and practice, uh, uh, perception of the media. Uh, perception of the media in regards to policy and, and the government practice. Day in and day out here, the media coming out with so many ideas, public debate, and all that. Does that, do those discussions have effect on government policy? So I was trying to look at what goes into the print media and all that. So when I saw this one, I said, oh, okay, it's, it's in line. So I think it's, a, it, 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 it's not out of place. It's a good thing. Thank you very much, Doc. Please. Entrepreneurship development in HES. Please, what is HES? Okay. So the entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship is a little bit far from my field, my 
but I can help with the method, with the data analysis. So if you need any help in, with the data analysis, I can do it. Uh, I want to join you, but I'm looking how can I join. So maybe with the data analysis. Okay. Thank you too. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. More comments. Hello? Okay, so considering that the time is very short, you have to present this thing by mid December. Yeah. I'd like to know when the reset topic will be finalized and then shared with us so that we can see what other ways we can help to contribute to the project. Thank you. Thank you, Registrar. Yeah, timeliness of data, data analysis, and final presentation of the document is what he has tagged as submission. And so uh, what I would advise is that we have data banks. And a project of this nature when they talk about global perspectives, and it is coming from, say, Ghana, it has to have a wider scope in terms of coverage. And what is innovative about our perspective? So again, I would also want us to look at the cultural dynamics of our entrepreneurial activity as a country. Uh, we may not have books that have covered, but all over Ghana, we know how entrepreneurial our people are, how the market forces, okay? We use our own traditional systems, okay, to enhance issues of entrepreneurship and small business startups, which some have become traditions of families. And so if we focus on some of these areas, uh, other institutions or countries may not project that. And so we can look at data banks. There are, there are de we just have to buy, instead of now developing a tool to go and collect. And I can show you where we can get some of these things to buy. Uh, quickly to save the time that the registrar talked about because data collection itself can can waste the time thank you and also on the topic again um, if you want to have a perfect topic from the scratch you can never proceed that goes to our student listening and everybody sometimes you are writing a paper or something Maybe you're just about to submit it, you, something can change. The topic that we have at the end of the day will still reflect the same thing, but it will be shorter, the wedding will put two or three together. Instead of women entrepreneurship, it becomes female entrepreneurship. My thesis like this, I think even two weeks to submission after everything, I had to remove one day or on from it. So it's okay, there's nothing wrong with not having a perfect topic. His problem is the wording. It's very lengthy. But the topic that will come up with at the end of the day will still reflect what we are doing. Do you get it? Uh -huh. So those students that are coming to us, okay, this is a working topic. I like it. Let's start working. If you say, is the topic okay? I can't give you a yes answer because as we progress or proceed, we'll be changing it accordingly, but it will not affect the work so much. So it's not any big issue now? Dr. Akujo, is that it? It also answer your question. Okay, all right, thank you. So that is the idea. But you, so we call it a working topic. Move on, proceed, then we'll be changing it as we move on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. 
And uh, please, there is a question in the chat, so Dr. Kujo can read that for us. It's not really a question. Uh, it's from. It's a great initiative. Kudos to management. And then the person said he would like to join the team. Uh, okay. I, I think it's Debbie. it's Debbie. Yeah, Debbie, yeah. Please, colleagues online, any question? Those online can put their questions in the chat. We read them out. All right, thank you very much. I want to commend the administration for a very good job done. I want to backtrace uh, the first submission of my doctor. He was my lecturer, he's still my lecturer. About the innovation fair in January, I want to say we should expand it to all departments. All right. And then to the Department of Rigo, I want to ask if you have a strategy to ensure that lecturers assigned to students who are embarking on a research to have interest in their research topics. Because I believe strongly that if the research goes well, it will be, it will be published. And then it will take the school ranking higher. I'm saying this because in my first degree, OK, all right. My name is Bright Badago. And then during my research time in uh, first degree, I went to Kolebu. No, I went to the black, de uh, black Band Department for data. I went and I was asked to come for a letter. I went to the registrar. He gave me the, he drafted a beautiful letter. He signed. And then we took it there. We had hectic time getting the data. So we have to come back to General Hospital to cook our own data. So at the end of the day, we cooked the data. I sat down and did funny mathematics just to put the data in place to, to have my project done. So I want to ask if the department will help us ensure that we get the rightful data at the rightful time, not cooking data just to pass and then go. Thank you very much. I hope your supervisor is not here listening to you that you cook data for him. <laughs> One task of this unit is data collection. So at any given time, they can develop an instrument and go and collect data so that we would also have a data bank. So students like you who have issues like this, when you contact the department, because they are also supposed to generate okay, funds for the institution. So they may have a data set that you can fall on and use either for your business or for your project or whatever. So uh, it is a business unit as well. Okay. It's not just a social uh, enterprise okay, movement. The business aspect is also very important, which they have to be doing. Because we need fans. Thank you. Exactly. And then, you can't do it alone. That's why he's collaborating with the HODs and everybody. So let's give him the necessary support. Yeah, your question is it's one thing that we are coming to do. So those students and supervisors here, they must hear me loud and clear. From this particular project with this academic year, we are going to put them all online. As you said, it also boosts the, whatever, the, the, the ranking of the investor, the image. So those in New Zealand can read a tell anonymous project work, okay? This is the topic and everything. So if it's not done well, the data is not right, everything is done anyhow, we are not even going to put it online in the first place, okay? 
So we are going to be very serious about it. And he said right about the data. We are all going to support it. There's this big international work I was doing with other people outside. The data, I got stuck like you. I tried to cook it. I got a statistician. He did all the mathematics. Everything were happy. We sent it there. They entered the system analysis. They said, no, smile. There's a problem with your data. I was really embarrassed. It, stopped, it sabotaged the work as well because it was, it was going to be perspective from Africa, New Zealand, and other places. Very, very embarrassing if we don't have a, a valid data. That's why we are working on this. That's why we want to strengthen research. That's why we want everybody's cooperation. And we, we, we hope that the next one that we are coming to have will have almost all the lecturers here. If a lecturer, a faculty member, a master's student, a graduate student will not be interested in this. I don't know how you'll be interested in. Seriously. It's voluntary, but I get to a place, if you're not coming, we'll take other measures because, uh, excuse me to say, the salary that we are paying is not just for teaching. Teaching, research, and uh, 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 community service, corporate with social responsibility. What are you giving back to the institution? What are you giving back to Tema, or Ghana, or Africa? We must do all that very well. So. Thank you for coming and your great input. Good. Aside the topic mentioned that will be worked on, are there any other research topics related to various departments available? If so, when would it be available for some of the faculty and staff to work on also? Any more questions? Yeah, Prof. Uh, he made a, I think he made a very good suggestion. I think yeah. we, we didn't address that. Where a lecturer supervises a student work. Look, let me speak for computer science. Prof, we are, we are into system development. Yeah. And Dr. Kudo will be straight on them that they, it should be system development. But I realize that some of my students will come to you with a such like any other topic that could be published. But we say, no, computer science, do a system, do a system. I think we can also look at that. And maybe even tax the student that we are giving this timeline. You are not developing a system, but you have this topic. At the end of the day, if you, the, the paper or your topic can be published within the time, the time, then you can graduate. We can take it as a, your final project. That is, that's what should happen. If you are doing anything differently, then there's but, School of Computer, we don't have that privilege, so I think if... I think yeah. that's what should be the case. That okay. should be the case, especially what you have learned in your area. There's a paper that I want to do with Dr. Kujo. He brought a topic and everything. Everything is system development, <laughs> IT. I said, no, dog, what do I have to do with this? Add innovation somewhere. Something, if anything new, add value, entrepreneurship. That's my area. Because I can't be, this, I can't be part of this paper with system development. So okay. you can't be in system development and write just social, social. If you want to add entrepreneurship, then you're talking about automating something, technology, then you come together and come up with something very good. I don't know whether I'm answering your question. No, or, no, or maybe no, no. That, that is it. The fact is that when it comes to computer science students, uh, it is mandatory that they also demonstrate what they've learned in their domain. So they can't just do the social research. Even if you want to do that, how do you apply IT to that? So that we know that you are demonstrating what you were taught in class. Uh -huh. It is also a kind of requirement. That's why we don't really allow them to go solely the social research or do the social research. Yes, please. Thank you. Yes. 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 We are interested in having the student to present what they are doing, where they go to the end. Yes. So now we, we are no longer in the era that you just get your work somewhere and come and present what you have done with We are not from that era, right? Yeah, not. And then we are also going to organize from academic board a seminar for staff members, faculty. I'm highly interested to always update my knowledge. How about the project where should be supervised very well? Yes, please. Then you do the right thing. Yes, please. So there's no book from somewhere. We can not take away. No take away. See, I don't want to make the final comment.
Right. Thank you so much. Um, my brother here did say something, and in fact, um, I just witnessed that a while ago, before the seminar commenced, a student that I'm supposed to supervise just sent me a topic, and you know, I was reading and uh, as a proposer, I was reading and I noticed that you no, know, there's something that she wants to write, but then she has left something out of it. So I quickly called her and in the course of discussion, they said, oh, okay, sir, yes, it's true. This is the intention, you know. So I said, good. You know what, you are the workplace, so call me in the evening and let's put it into that. It's good we put our work on online so that people too can read. But then what I want to find out is how do we, those supervising, check that, you know, the work that these students are bringing to us uh, the originality, it's, you know, what is expected of the school. It's uh, an issue to me that I want to, right. Yeah, so this, this uh, last year, and then what we are also trying to do this year is that all the, uh, the project work that the student will bring, we are going to run similarity check on it. Luckily, we have a system from UDS. So if you come, I can even give you access to it. So we'll check all the project work. Uh, we'll run it through the turn it in and check the percentage. So I told them, I had a meeting with them online and I told them all these things that we'll be doing. So I told them that there's a threshold. If you go beyond that threshold, your work will be rejected. So I had a meeting with them just this week about some of these issues. Okay. But then those of us supervising, I think, Yes, so we, we don't can, know we can what create the an account is. for you. We can create an account for you or just give you the access. When they submit the work, you can even run it from your end. Good. Even before because it come should from come from us yes. before it okay. gets to your end. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. You have a question? So that's the last question. Then we, we can. Um, I want to thank the uh, management for this program. I happen to be part of InnoHub, that British Council Entrepreneurship Project. And that is how come I've seen the importance of entrepreneurs or business owners. And so I will recommend that if this, we can be doing it even weekly, because it will open our mind to understand um, um, an organization goal. Then when you join the organization, you work to make sure that the, 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 the goal is achieved because somebody started a job from somewhere, you had no idea about it. Then at the middle of it, you join to receive salary. Then when you continue, you see the stress the business owners go through to come up with all this research and other things to enable the business to sustain in the market. So I think it's a very a big opportunity for us to um, keep doing it every weekly. I will prefer week. Thank you. Thank you. So we. Okay. So after after your comments, then we, the the. Chair Not table. a comment. Just uh, to say that for every, um, you have to present your work two weeks before the next presentation. When is your turn? So that. No, this is just adding just um, about this seminar series. So the next one, which is IT and the rest, um, two weeks to the time. Uh, yeah, latest by one week. You should, let's have your presentations, and if you have any challenges, let's look at it before so we can prepare. Thank you very much. That's a good one. We, we every month would have the poster, so not the one that presenting from computer science should not be the HOD. If it's Mr. Mavi or Mr. Kwashi, Mr. Kwashi presentation on this topic, the chair is going to be the registrar. My poster, well advertised, always stream on Facebook for people to see what is happening in data link, that we are not playing with research, the knowledge and all that we are, we are, we are acquiring here. So my final comment is, as he said, this office is open to anyone. Uh, please go, go to him, contact him, discuss your ideas and whatever you want to do with him. So when you discuss ideas, I want to work on this, then he can say that, yeah, 
Uh, Dr. Mankwa is working on this. Can you join this person? Can you join Madam on this particular project? Because he is now the hub of research, hub of ideas. So anything that comes to mind. Re uh, 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 if you're a lecturer, you can't do without research, publication, or whatever it is. I am as busy as something, thinking about the investing. But on my own way, I need to develop. So I'm also working on research. I'm working uh, with five teams here. Here, there, and there. We wake up at dawn to write. We sleep very late. That's the only way you survive if you want to take the academia pathway. So those of us resting, then you cannot survive here. So let's make use of this golden opportunity. I think he has started well. My word is don't relax. The work is big. You are one-man office, but take it forward. There are a lot of one-man offices in this university. Registrar is also one man his office is always crying for somebody to assist him as a PA, but it's not getting. So you'll be one man office for a while, okay? And our students there, thank you for joining in. We'll continue to have this hybrid method. Your research work is very important. It's going to be online. Your name will be attached. Somebody will see it in Bangladesh and say that I like what Achakbo has done. So I want to collaborate with Achakbo. Research work will get a consultancy assignment. It's not just for the university, personal development, development of the department, as well as the university. And the, 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 the benefit that we get personally is even more than the university. So don't let us relent on that. Let's continue working hard. Whatever we have to do to move ourselves a data link forward, let's do that. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much, Chairman. We ask Madam Abigail to give us the closing prayer. Yeah. Uh, 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 refreshment for all the in-person participants so you pick it before you go we don't want it to be separate, but we don't want distractions so always have it at the back of the, the, the room when we have money it can change from oh, the snacks to something else so when we close it you pick it and you move thank you very much I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry.